Um, yeah. Woo! Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I did tell Derek, you know, he was a little uncertain whether he, back in 1999, whether he wanted to uh, do a small press. But I said, I can guarantee you, you will never run out of books. Uh, I wasn't referring to my stuff, believe me, because I, I was already in touch with a lot of other good people out there, and I was, I'm, I'm very happy to see that he has published the work of so many other uh, great writers, a number of whom are here. Uh, um, you know, and, and the work he has done for weird poetry is is beyond compare. I mean, there's there's uh, there's no better publisher for weird poetry right now, and maybe ever that hippocampus press. But um, what I wanted to say, I, I, I don't want to go too long, but I wanted to mention a couple projects that I'm interested in or that I'm involved in that you may not know about because I haven't really talked about them on my blog and I think they're pretty exciting. Uh, the most exciting being nothing less than a Lovecraft biopic. We are working on a movie about H.P. Lovecraft. Uh, and it's going to be called the Lovecrafts, plural, because it will focus on the Lovecraft Sony Green relationship. Because understandably, she's the major figure in Lovecraft's life. Yeah. Yeah. Now, to say that we are working on this film doesn't mean that the film will be made. As you know, lots of films are, are planned and never happen, but we're hoping it'll happen. Um, I will mention a couple things. Um, I'm working with a guy named Ryan Grulick, G-R-U-L-I-C-K, C-H, um, who has, you know, connections with the film industry. He's worked for Disney and done, done, done a number of other things. So he's kind of the spearhead behind this. Um, he got somebody, uh, uh, his name will not be mentioned here because it they wouldn't mean anything to you because he's not, you know, famous, but he got somebody to write a screenplay for this film, and this guy didn't seem to know a whole lot about Lovecraft before he started, but he said, oh yeah, I'm going to spend a month reading, you know, reading the Jersey biography and all these letters and all sorts of other things, and uh, so he produced a screenplay of 96 pages a few months ago, and I, and I looked at it and I said, not what I had in mind. <laughs> so I pleaded with Mr. Grulick to let me write my own screenplay, even though I knew nothing about writing screenplays aside from reading this thing. You know, um, I'm not a film guy um, at all. Um, so I wrote my own screenplay of 108 pages in eight days. <laughs> because I knew what I wanted to say. I knew how how this thing was to be structured, at least and I felt this would be a, a good way to do it. Uh, this version has now gone through another revision, but most of my version still remains. I'm happy to that. that. And now, so we are now officially in pre-production. Um, if anybody can think of somebody who looks like Lovecraft, <laughs> Christopher Hardell is probably a little too old for that purpose. Uh, we need some young guy in his 30s to look like Lovecraft, uh, who can play Lovecraft, but that's one of the many things that we're uh, we're thinking about. Um, so this is this is a very exciting project. I mean, I hope it happens. I mean, you know, money is ma basically the, a major issue, but there are other issues as well. So let's just hope for the best. Um, I do not expect to be standing up at the Academy Awards taking the award for best original screenplay anytime soon. Uh, but you never know; strange things have happened. Um, anyway, I, I am quite excited about this project because I think it does portray Lovecraft as he really was. Because I take so many stuff, so much stuff, right from his letters or from Sonia's memoir or you know other other primary documents, and I think the result is you know a, a real picture of Lovecraft, which I don't and I don't spare the warts. You know, you know the major wart. We 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 will uh, we, we all know what it is. It's in there, uh, not emphasized, but it's in there. We can't avoid that subject and, and other subjects, you know, about his relations with his mother, his relations with his aunts, and things like that. So it's a hu it's a picture of a human life. It's not really about him as a writer. I mean, obviously, there are things about him, uh, you know, uh, as a writer, but uh, mostly it's about him as a human being and his, you know, relations to another human being named Sonia Green. Um, and the Kalen Club is involved, you know, Frank Benlap Long is there, George Kirk is there, and the, you know, other, other of those folks. So let's hope for the best. Um, that's, that's been taking up quite a lot of time, um, uh, but other things I'm doing, of course, is an ongoing uh, publication of Lovecraft's letters. We're actually on the downhill slope 
the last project. I never thought that would happen because it's still going to come to about 25 volumes. We've done what, 9, 10, 11? I don't know how many volumes we are, but uh, soon uh, you will see a massive volume of about 1,200 pages of his letters to his family, uh, especially his, uh, uh, well, there are not that many letters to his mother, but especially to his aunts, his two aunts, uh, and especially when he was in New York City, there's like four or five hundred thousand words of letters uh, to, to those two ladies. Uh, and it's just a, a fascinating revelation. I mean, I, I mine a lot of that from my biography, of course. Uh, you, you, I mean, you can know, learn about what kind of toothbrush he had, what kind of crackers he liked, you know, and donuts and baked beans. I mean, every possible thing about his daily life that, that uh, you know, uh, uh, is in there. And it's, it's a, uh, and so much else. Um, so that's coming. And, a number of other volumes of letters are coming and you know I tell you once once we publish all those letters well what is there to do I guess I'll, I'll retire but uh, <laughs> um, the one great thing about Lovecraft as, and, and you will read about this in my in my memoir is that uh, some people call him a gateway drug that is to say <laughs> he leads you to other writers that you might not have known about and I certainly doubt that I would have ever done work on Lord Dunsany or Arthur Mackin or Algernon Blackwood or Ramsey Campbell uh, or, or a number of others if I had not encountered Lovecraft and so that's uh, you know it's uh, that's what Robert Block meant when he said Lovecraft was my university uh, and he's been my university too even though I went to Brown and, and got a great education but uh, uh, I continue to, to learn uh, from reading about Lovecraft and, and reading, reading uh, his, his work. Uh, and I'm, I'm gratified to learn that I've, that I've done a lot of work on these other writers and helped to, to raise their, uh, their status in the world. So um, that's why I call this biography, you know, uh, or my, my, my autobiography, you know, uh, uh, a life in Lovecraft, because even though I've done a lot of stuff outside of Lovecraft, it, I, I keep coming back to him and, and he's really a touchstone for, for all the other work that I have done, however remote it may be. Uh, and to me, that's a testament to, to the, the richness of Lovecraft's own work and his mind and his character. Uh, I mean, he was, not, he was a flawed individual by, by all means, but uh, uh, there's so much good stuff in him. There's so much uh, that, that, that uh, you know, he, he, he awakens you to so many different things that, that uh, you might not have uh, uh, thought about before, and so that's that's one of the great things I've taken away from Lovecraft. And and if other people can can do that, if I can help other people do that, well, then I feel that my life has been uh, not lived in vain. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.